Hey guys, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Um, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. First, um, I heard a rumor, I don't know how true it is, but I heard a rumor that either Nancy Pelosi or somebody in Matt general um, group said that that Pelosi wants to get rid of not only Donald Trump but also Mike Pence and if that's true then because she's third in line to the president that would mean she would become the, the president of the United States so if it's true, okay, that means this has nothing to do with any wrongdoing. This has nothing to do with whether or not Trump's a criminal or uh, illegitimate or anything. This is a power grab for the White House. It's basically what this is. If it is true what I heard, and I don't remember where I heard it from, um, so I'm perfectly willing to be wrong, but all I'm saying is I'm going to be on top of this like white on rice, you know, to see where this is going to lead because, um, because of that. And also that, um, in sort of an answer to my question, what are you afraid of, Nancy, for not putting it to a vote? Because ever since I put up that last video about uh, Nancy Pelosi being a coward and being scared to put it to the vote, I received a few comments echoing what they were saying, which is you don't need a vote to start an inquiry. And my immediate reaction is, really? Well, then how come for the Nixon impeachment inquiries they put it to a vote first before anything happened? Why is it then that they put it to a vote first thing for Bill Clinton? And why is it that Nancy put it to a vote three times, okay, this year? If it were true, if it were true that what they're doing now is kosher and proper and the way it's supposed to happen, and everything else, and the way it's supposed to be run. And why is it that for Nixon, Clinton, and these three times, did they put it to a vote first? If that is true. So that's the argument I do with that. Now, I don't know if it's true, if Nancy Pelosi wants to get rid of Mike Pence as well as um, Donald Trump. Um, because then being third in line, that is a beeline to the White House. Okay. Now, uh, that aside, I want to talk about the current meeting now, according to Pelosi, um, Donald Trump, in that meeting about the whole Syria and Turkey uh, matter, right, that Pelosi and Schumer uh, had a meeting with Donald Trump at the White House, and that apparently they stormed off and, you know, said that it was, uh, that president was unhinged, and now what President Trump called Nancy as a third-rate politician, and said all these negative things. But what's interesting to note, you know, is after that, when not only Donald Trump, but other people 
who were there, said that as soon as Pelosi and Schumer had walked out, then the meeting went fine. The meeting went okay, and there was no, no, because apparently Pelosi just, um, <coughs> Andrew, yeah, that Pelosi just, uh, disrupted the whole meeting, and, to, and, and nothing got done, nothing got accomplished, and, Things got very nasty. <clears throat> but then when Pelosi left the room, then this is okay. Now with that distraction, now let's have a meeting. And they did. They had a wonderful meeting without Pelosi there. And I also got to think, what kind of meeting does Pelosi expect when she was the one who initiated this impeachment against President Trump. Okay, <coughs> I think Pelosi had a lot of chutzpah and a lot of nerve insisting that they be at a meeting with the man she initiated an impeachment inquiry about. What do you think that uh, President Trump's reaction is going to be to you. Do you think he's going to welcome you with open arms? Hello, Miss Pelosi. So wonderful to see you. You know, uh, no. Welcome to the meeting. Do you think he's going to be nice and warm and cozy and fuzzy to you? I mean, I, I wondered that when I heard about that. I said, oh, that's got to be awkward. This is my, that was my first reaction. When I first heard there was a meeting between Schumer, Pelosi, and President Trump. When I first heard that, I was like, oh, I smell disaster in the air. Oh, that's not going to be good. <coughs> and sure enough, it wasn't. Especially when Pelosi just started off and disrupted the whole meeting and then turned it around and blamed it on Trump. And this is what I was talking about before about taking responsibility for one's actions. That she was insisted on laying the blame on Pelosi, on uh, Trump, when she was the one disrupting the meeting. And what kind of reaction did she expect from the man she started impeachment impeachment inquiries about. What did she expect? Like I said, the first time, first thing I thought of was Pelosi's going to be at a meeting with Trump. I said, oh, nothing good's going to come of that. Oh, I can imagine the sparks are going to fly. And sure enough, they did. So, like I said, she had a lot of Chutzpah and a lot of nerve to try to have a nice, pleasant meeting with the man she had started impeachment inquiries about. You know, it, it's just like it, even even Stevie Wonder could see disaster coming on this. You know, but unfortunately, that's the Democrat side. They they're just not rooted in reality. So, it's like, um, it has to be awkward. It has to be awkward. Because imagine if you're in an office, right, and you complain to the boss about a coworker, all right, and you're at a meeting. But here's the thing, right? You made you you bragged, okay, about how you put in this complaint, and now the two of you are at a meeting. I mean, do you think this is gonna be all nice and warm and fuzzy and cozy at that meeting? No, hell no. Sparks are gonna fly. So you know, 
anyway, that's what I wanted to say. So, um, a lot of it's very um, predictable. So, anyway, that's all I want to talk about. All right. Uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye.